This week we are talking about lock picking, which I'm sure you are looking forward to. Um, I know when I first uh, mentioned that I might include lock picking in the the course, people were obviously interested, and um, you can kind of think of it as being a little um, extra thing in the module, so that you know now that you guys have finished your assignments, and then next week you guys can actually have a go at doing this stuff and get do a bit of hands-on stuff and. Um, hopefully learn a little bit about physical security in the process and understand the kind of security that, you know, actually is provided by a locked door. So, you know, how much security does an actual a locked door provide in an organisation or in your house? Um, I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you, do you feel secure when you lock your house and you walk away from it? Do you think your things are safe? <coughs> Yeah. Hi, come in. Um, and I guess from a um, security point of view, for for like digital security, why is this relevant at all to what we're talking about? Why does this matter? What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, if you have physical access to a computer, you can um, do a lot of stuff that you shouldn't you wouldn't normally be allowed to do. If you can physically access a computer, you can pull the hard drive out. And hey, you don't need to know the password anymore to log into Windows because you just plug the hard drive into a different computer. Or, you know, plug a USB in and you can install software that you might not otherwise be able to access if you were only restricted to, you know, internet access and things like that. So yes, physical security is a big deal. There are lots of security mechanisms that, that are used despite the fact that we know of weaknesses. So the common pin tumble lock is a very good example of that. So they're ubiquitous. Pretty much every lock that um, you would have in a regular building is probably a pin tumbler lock. Um, but almost all of them are vulnerable to basic forms of lock picking. So the things that um, I'm about to explain to you, you can apply to most locks. And some locks will have um, different types of mechanisms, so you need to do things, uh, use different methods to, to pick them. Um, and some locks also have like anti-picking um, features that just make it a bit harder. Um, but almost all locks that you come across will actually just be standard pin tumble locks. So having said that, lock picking isn't always the most efficient way of getting in somewhere. So if you turn up and there's a locked door, the lock probably isn't the weakest link in that security system. You can smash the door down or the window down probably quicker and easier than it is to pick the lock using like a standard lock pick set. Um, and you don't need to understand, you don't need to have any, tech, any knowledge at all in order to do that. You can throw a brick through a window um, and, you know, or you could spend a couple of hours learning how to pick a lock um, and then pick the lock. So I guess the question is, why would anyone pick a lock? Take longer to find out how you break in something. Yeah, yeah, it would be very hard. It's quite hard to tell that anyone's broken in if you do pick a lock. It is possible with forensics to actually physically look at the pins of the lock and see like a unique type of scraping that indicates it was probably picked because it's a different than the normal wear that happens. But unless you've like murdered someone, they're not gonna you know, look at that kind of level of forensics analysis, probably. Um, so what we have here, and I'm gonna demonstrate in a minute, and look, what we have in the labs is um, this equipment for you to, to use uh, to look at doing some uh, lock picking. So we've got uh, lockpick sets like these. So you can see here there are um, a number of different uh, picks. Um, so there's there's a number of different tools in here, but the two that you need in order to pick most locks look like this. So you've got a tension wrench. That's this thing. 
and a lifter pick, which is this thing. So as you can see on the slide there, <coughs> and I'll show uh, up on the screen in a minute. We've also got cutaway locks where you can actually um, see inside at the pins and the way that they move just to try and understand it. Please resist the temptation to touch the pins. Don't go sticking things in there thinking that, oh, I almost picked it. What if I just give it a bit of a help? You just, you'll end up with springs and pins flying everywhere. So please, please don't do that. Um, but the idea is you can see through it and you can see into the mechanics of the lock uh, to try and understand things. Uh, and we have um, practice boards where it's got a number of locks in it um, and with different number of pins. So you can think of it as being different difficulty levels. So picking a one pin lock is super easy up to picking a five pin lock is quite, quite challenging. Um, and that is, if you can get work your way all the way up to the five pins, then you can pick your front door, for example. Um, the movies do it wrong because you definitely need a tension wrench and very rarely in a movie you actually see them using two things or you'll see someone get like a hairpin out and pick a lock. Yeah, you could probably use a hairpin but you'd need two of them. You know, you'd need something shaped like this and something shaped like that. And yeah, you can use paper clips and things but um, it's easier if you use a tool that has a bit more strength. Um, so just some um, terminology. The shell is the part of the lock that doesn't turn with the key. So the, the outside part. The keyway is where the key goes. The ward is the fact that the keyway has that shape. That means that it kind of you know, gets in the way of you putting other things into the, the lock. Um, and the plug is the, the cylinder in the middle that turns with the key. Um, if you look at inside the lock, so this is a cutaway lock where you can see the, um, the actual inside. We've got some springs, and then we've got two sets of pins stacked on top of each other. So we've got driver pins and key pins. So a top pin and a bottom pin. Um, and if you insert the correct key, then um, they're going to all line up along that shear line, which is where the plug spins. And if they all line up, then you can turn the key and the plug will turn. If they don't line up, then they're going to get in the way and you can't turn the, turn the lock. So you can see that there are lots of lots of different devices that use pin tumble locks. So you even even some um, uh, like padlocks will basically be exactly the same internally. They use very similar uh, mechanism where there's a pin, pin uses the pins. And um, you can see here, Another image where it, the um, the key pins are different sizes, matching the actual key that you've got. So if those, um, you know, if a different key was inserted there, then obviously they wouldn't be all lining up in a row like that. So this is what it looks like when you insert an incorrect pin. So now we've got these lines, um, which you can see. There's a line there, line there. Line there, line there. So you can see this one is definitely not lining up with this line along here. Um, so when you insert the, the wrong key, you, you won't be able to turn the key, basically. So the way that you go about picking a lock is you um, start by just getting a feel for where the pins are. So you can put the tension wrench in if you like, but at the start, don't actually apply any torque, like don't apply any pressure yet. You just insert the lifter pick, Slowly you remove it and listen and feel for each of those pins to get a feel for where they are in the lock. So these are the basic steps in order to pick a lock. You'll insert, insert the torque wrench into the lock. Uh, apply a small amount of pressure. Try a few lifter picks, find the one that works best for you and the lock, insert the lifter pick Starting from the back, gently feel for each of the pins and push them slightly. Many of the pins will simply bounce back, but one or two will be stuck between the plug and the hole. These are the bound pins. So basically you push, you're applying some pressure on the, the tension wrench. You basically put push from the start at the back, push the pin up. Um, if it bounces back down, fine, move on to the next. 
if it is staying up, it'll basically, it'll be one of the pins that is binding. So you push that up uh, until you um, feel it in place and then you go on to the next one. So the, the key pin will always drop down, but the driver pin for the bound pins will actually stay up. Um, this you could push them up till you feel a click and then um, and the plug might turn slightly. If you don't, don't push them up too far, otherwise you can overpick um, the lock by ending up with the key pin above the shear line. And if that happens, it's not possible to pick the lock. You just have to start again. And you can start again by just letting go of the tension wrench and start again. Um, so after setting each pin, then there'll be another pin that's binding. You try and find that next binding pin and, and go back and just keep doing that until they're all in place. So uh, it's it's quite straightforward. So I'm going to um, do a demonstration of these techniques in a second. So raking is where you um, basically, so you put your tension wrench in, insert a rake pick, and you just kind of drag it backwards and forwards over the pins. That might set some of them for you, which can save some time. Um, and um, yeah, so it's another technique that you can use to try and save time. There are other techniques as well. So you can do things like key impressioning, which is where you copy a key from a source key. Um, and you can, you can do things like manipulation-based impressioning, where you um, basically take a, a blank key um, and you can actually insert it into a lock and try and analyze the markings on the key and keep filing it down until you have a working key. But it's quite difficult. You can use key bumping, which is um, where you have these keys that are specially designed um, and you can basically insert them into the, the correct type of lock. So you need different um, bump keys for different types of locks. But if you've got the correct bump key, you can basically use it to... Um, it, ba it basically works on the principle of... Um, is it called Newton's Cradle? You know those executive swing things you see on um, desks that click backwards and forwards? We have the, the middle ones just stay in place and the, the ones on the end bounce back and forwards. That's kind of what like key bumping does. Is you whack the key in and turn it, and the idea is it hits that bottom pin and forces the top pin to bounce up and then turn the key, and you can um, get in that way. And a snap gun works on the same principle, where you insert the snap gun and the torque wrench, snap, 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 um, and it'll try and bounce those top pins away so that you can turn the key. And that can be a lot quicker than, um, than picking with a lock pick set. Um, so that's a, like, another technique that you can use. <clears throat> lock sport is a common hobby uh, in, in the UK and other places. For, especially for people in computer security and other, um, you know, related fields. So it's quite a common hobby, hobby where you basically have competitions to see who can pick locks the fastest. And a lot of security conferences have little lock picking booths and um, little um, competitions and things. So if you uh, get a chance, I do um, recommend you check out one of those. Um, there's a um, society or a... Um, club, I guess, called Tool, with lots of O's, uh, that do uh, lock sport. So you might want to check out their website. So why do we care? Well, as an example, there was a, um, a killer escape from prison. This is, this, is a, this is a headline. Killer escaped prison after being issued picture of master key to all locks. So there was a pamphlet that was given to all the inmates on arrival. And I had like a set of keys shown on the front. And they were the actual keys to the cells that they were in. Um, and you managed to make a, a copy of the cell uh, of the key from the, um, the pamphlet. So if you understood how keys worked, you might understand that you don't want to actually give someone a photo of your key if you're trying to keep them out. So yeah, so let's have a look at these things. <clears throat> 